Coming up next, we're going to be talking to Kevin Connolly. He's the lead singer of Iron Age Mystics. You might know him from a band in the 80s called New Regime. How do you go from a pop band to one of the most politically charged albums of the year? Find out next on That Eric Alper Show, Channel 167, Canada Talks. I'm only over here No, I ain't disappeared I'm only over here Step down Welcome back to that Eric Elber Show on Canada Talks. Canadian melodic hard rockers Iron Age Mystics say, Save it for the revolution, man. In their newest single off of this year's politically stirring album, Pride Before the Fall. That album, this album, it's a debut masterpiece of fitting larger than life rock out proportions. The Toronto based rockers continue to hit creative pay dirt once again with one of the smartest and politically motivated albums of this year by anybody. And think about this again. They are from Canada. I'm so happy to have lead singer Kevin Connolly joining me right now. You can go to ironagemystics.com for all the details and upcoming shows and releases and videos. Hey, man, how are you? Hey, man, great. I listen to that, and I think this can't be the same guy from New Regime all (laughs) those years ago. Um, Tell me about what it was like being really like one of the biggest bands in the 80s in the age of much music and Toronto rocks being in like it seemed like every single like half hour there was a new new regime right. video being played right yeah yeah you know it was pretty crazy Eric yeah I gotta, I gotta you looked like that you were having fun yeah oh yeah it was fun for the most part um you know, I, I don't think my mom was too fond of kids, uh, you know, crashing out on her lawn <laughs> and uh, camping out by the front and back doors waiting for me to... You know. Did you did you love that? Did you love the, the really great parts of it uh, and hated the really bad parts of it? <laughs> like, was it like, uh, you know, peaks and valleys throughout it or was it pretty consistent for you? I just took it, you know, kind of, I just took it for kind of like you're surfing, right? You know, I mean, eventually the wave comes to an end and you wind on the shore right so like i wasn't really my attachment uh was short-lived to the idea of like being a famous guy and you know and all the bells and whistles go along with that because you know all rides end right you know so yeah. uh i just wanted to actually at the end of it go back to being a down-to-earth musician when, when all was said and done right so, right yeah. So walk me through how you go from that to Iron Age Mystics to not necessarily <laughs> with the band member that you're with now, but how do you go philosophically from saying, this is what I want to use music for back then, and this is truly what I want to use music for now, even though that, I mean, it's been 35 years, so I understand yeah, that I, people change and grow up. Well, it was a long walk, uh, <laughs> metaphorically speaking. Um I don't know, around, uh, when, when I was in my early 30s, I started to read a lot, like a lot uh, of uh, news, mainstream, alternative, um, became a bit of a history buff, right? Yeah. And then the idea of this project was posed to me by the drummer, uh, the first drummer, Greg Mount, and it was just going to be an innocent writing project, really, you know, no expectations. And as a month or two or three went by, I said, you know, I... I just something was talking at my conscience, and I said, "Man, I got to start talking about this stuff, right?" Yeah, like all the stuff I'm reading. Did you always feel that way? Did you always like when you were an artist or when you were in high school forming bands? Did you always see musicians having a voice and that they should use it? Did you grow up with politically active or at least people who spoke out? Uh, my brother was a big Bob Dylan fan, and I was a teenager when punk, uh, you know, came. Did to you me. get into it? Uh, actually, the first song that I played uh, live at High School Battle of the Bands was Sex Pistols Holiday in the Sun. <laughs> <laughs> and they tried to throw us off stage. My buddies on the football stage wouldn't let them, or on, right. the, on the football team. And you're like, this is awesome. This is exactly <laughs> what it's supposed to do. So, yeah, no, it, I, it got on my blood earlier. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then along came New Regime, and we had uh, a song uh, off our first album, which was very popular, particularly in Ottawa, 
uh, a song called Careful, which was an mm -hmm. anti-war song. Uh, one of the more, well, actually probably the only truly politically motivated song on our first album. And again, you know, it stayed in my, in my blood. And as, uh, as New Regime dissipated and we went uh, yeah. by the wayside, you know, I'd, it took me about, like I said, probably about 10 years to come around to this is what I really, really want to do, man. I like it. Like, you know, I'm no spring chicken anymore. I've been up and down the ladder more than once. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's time to give back, really, was my, was my feeling. Yeah. Is it hard to get back into it? Is it hard to get into the idea of not necessarily playing, but to know now what you want and what you don't want out of the record business and as it is in 2018, 2019, as opposed to what it was like back then. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, well, as I, as I've said before in a, in a few other interviews, I was very, very fortunate, you know, to get plucked, uh, from a sea of excellent Toronto bands and, uh, get signed and, and do as well as we did. Uh, but at my age, I'm not, I like, you know, I'll play any stage you give me, a big one or a little one. Mm. Uh, that doesn't matter. But what what matters is the authenticity of my drive to make an album yeah. that is 11 tracks deep and 100% social political, right? Yeah. I want it to be, uh, if this is the last album I ever make, which I doubt it will be, but right. if it is, uh, I'll be happy uh, closing on a note like, you know, probably yeah. before the fall. You know? Yeah. From your perspective as a musician, do you think that there's a lack of politically motivated songs out there? Or do you think there's more than what people realize? It's just maybe not getting the mainstream success of maybe what you and I grew up with of hearing Ohio right. on the radio. Right. Because there's not a lot of them that are out there on commercial radio. No, that's true. That's true. I, I, I'm trying to remember the last front to back uh, political album that I'd heard. May, yeah. Maybe American Idiot. Maybe. Mm. Mm, yeah, maybe, yeah, but yeah. they never really came out and said. Well, I guess that they did that it was an anti-Bush album. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Uh, you know, it's obviously uh, Green Day being very American-centric. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be at, about American right. politics. Right, and certainly now there's 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 definitely a lot. It's just, I mean, what do you want to? I mean, what do you want to get out of an album these days? What do you want to achieve? not just in terms of the music stuff, but what do you want people to walk away from now that, that you have it with the limitations that the industry offers a band like Iron Age Mystics? Or do you even look to them and say, that's old school, I'm not even thinking about that, I just want to put out the best record possible? Uh, more the latter by far, Eric. I mean, my, I mean, some of the best memories, even going, and especially going back to New Regime, were when people would, you know, uh, humbly come out and say, man, you know, I was having a tough time. Yeah. Uh, that song, uh, I was driving around. There was, there was one chap who came backstage and he said, uh, humbly, you know, I, I, I'm not here to drink your beer. I just want to shake your hand. Uh, that song you wrote, Fool's Cry, uh, it saved my butt. You know, I had broken up with uh, my lifelong love. I was driving around. I was out of my head. It was four in the morning. I heard mm. that song come on. And... It helped me pull myself back in, right? Wow. And that's the kind of thing, uh, albeit fairly rare, but it, that's the kind of thing I remember. That's what stays with me. Yeah. And when I get, uh, you know, uh, the same sort of humility, and I feel humility yeah. uh, when, I'm, when I'm hearing these words, it's like, you know, I would love to be a marching song uh, for uh, for a uh, 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 well-thought-out protest uh, for a very good cause against something yeah. that needs to be stood up against. Yeah. Right? What's amazing about that story is that, you know, whenever I talk to musicians who, who have that experience with people coming up to them saying how much their song changed their lives, what's fascinating to me is that you write a song not having any clue who's going to hear it, mm -hmm. and then you put it out there in the world, and it comes back to you in different experiences from different people. But with Iron Age Mystics, it seems like, now on the political side of things, when you put out something that is anti-Trump, you're only speaking to your base. Right. Like you're only speaking to the people who want to listen to that. And I think sometimes some that's lost now. Yeah. And I wish that people can go back to the experiences that you felt of, wow, I, I heard that song and it kind of made me think about the life I've been living or the or the leaders that I've been following. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I hope that's happening a lot more these days, but I'm not sure it is. 
Uh, I'd like to believe that underneath the surface these days that there is a fire, uh, a positive fire brewing within people. And I think, mm. I think that a lot of people are awakening or semi-awakened. And yeah. I think that the need uh, for positive social change uh, has the potential and, and is crucial right now as, as it ever was in history, I'm sure, yeah. uh, has the potential of uniting people, you know, getting people to set aside their differences. You know, you have much more in common uh, with, with your neighbor yeah. uh, than, than you do with the people who, who are running this rock into the ground, I believe. Yeah, and, yeah. And I, I think if it's, if, I think we're close. I really do, Eric. Yeah. You know, I could be all wet on that, and I've been wrong before. But <laughs> yeah, well, I think we were all a little, a little bit wrong. And that's the scary part of it. But I guess when you're an artist and you're a musician, the only thing you can really do is use the talents that you have to create art. Right. No, and that's exactly it. And another thing that I would like to, you know, and whether it's music, uh, I'd like to inspire other artists to do the same. If you're, if you're a writer, mm. write about it. If you're yeah. a painter paint about it if you're an illustrator illustrate about it right yeah you yeah know, it, it, it it's it's absolutely right uh, uh number one important in these days you've got uh, uh you've got an amazing amazing killer band on this record but one voice that i didn't really expect to hear when i first heard the record um just uh uh, happens to be a politician <laughs> um <laughs> happens to be the voice of bernie sanders right um i heard that there's a cool story behind that and what happened afterwards? Yeah, okay, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give it up. Um, so we had recorded, we were about halfway through the recording of the album, and uh, and we had everything, I had all the lyrics, I had everything in place, it was arranged, and it came down to a Sunday morning, uh, and I'm listening uh, to YouTube, and I'm hearing Bernie Sanders just riffing about the financial collapse, right? It was great. Right. Know? And so, you know, I download it and I put it on a thumb drive. That siren, by the way, that's that's the cops coming to take you away now because of the story. No, we, we better step <laughs> it up then, right? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so we're in the studio and I'm, and I'm thinking, guys, guys, just run with me on this. Like, we have a bridge. We have nothing in the bridge. So how about this? And I plug it in and there's Bernie Riffin, right? Yeah. And so, you know, the engineer takes the uh, wave file and he puts it uh, into the track. And it's beautiful. It's, it, it sounds like we meant it to be that way right. from the beginning. Yeah. So a couple of months go by, and, and uh, we get the tracks, or, or that track mixed. And I, I'm thinking, and I call my manager, and I go, look, it, this is going to come out at some point. <laughs> we just can't, like, you know, release it without asking you know, the office of Bernie Sanders. So yeah. uh, Carrie, my manager, gets on the, uh, gets on the uh, email, <coughs> uh, finds out the right contacts, and, uh, and um, you know, about a half an hour later, she gets an email, a very kind of short, cryptic email going, where can we hear it? <laughs> <laughs> she sends back the website address, right? So there's the website address. Another 50 minutes later, gets back an email going, and I'm, I'm shaking my head going, oh, this could go very wrong. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Gets back an email 50 minutes later, and it's like, we love it. It's great. He loves it. And thank you for using Bernie in this song. Uh, sincerely, da, da, da. it was just fantastic, man. I was walking on sunshine for a week. Amazing, I love that. So don't take my word for it. Don't take your word for it. Exactly. We're too close to this album. Exactly. Bernie Sanders loves this album. Yeah, yeah. And, so there you go. And he's the man, man. I mean, come on. Um, come on. This is this is an album, probably before the fall, that um, I, I think is going to end up on a lot of year end best of lists. I, I think it's going to. Um, I think it's going to spark a lot of people in this country to realize that, that they do have a voice and that they can use art to do it. And Kev, thanks a lot for, for putting it together. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much, Eric. Um, you can go to ironagemystics.com for all of the details on that band. Also want to say thanks to Girl Power for joining me at the top of the show. And also Daniel Gallagher talking about his family member, Rory. Thanks to Aaron Papernick for bringing the show together. And also for you for listening. My name is Eric Alper. You've been listening to this show, my show, right here on Sirius XM, Channel 167, Canada Talks. <laughs>